Last night, the ANC National Working Committee met in the Western Cape. Now, the party would not confirm the agenda, but some of the most pressing issues include a call for the removal of the Northwest Province uh, uh, Premier Supra Mahomopelo following service delivery protests and corruption allegations. Uh, Professor David Everett is the uh, head of the School of Governance at the Wits University, and he uh, joins us this morning via Skype. Uh, uh, Prof, thank you very much. Good to have you on the program. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, this NWC meeting, it really did take place on, on, on quite a... Um, a a crazy day here in South Africa. I mean, there's more service delivery protests that happened in Soweto, El Dorado Park, also in Mitchell's Plain. What's behind this show of unhappiness? Well, I think, I think, I think at the moment, every day is a crazy day. And at some level, I think the, the change in leadership has opened up a political space that people are trying to fill. Uh, you know, we've had nine, nine and a half years of fairly uh, strong central leadership, uh, however you want to judge that leadership, uh, but the security cluster worked uh, fairly powerfully to keep things running as smoothly as they felt they ought to. And I think political space is opening up. There's contestation within the ANC, there's contestation within the DA, there's contestation within almost all the parties. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, and of course with the trade union federations as well. Yeah. So I think that opens up a space both for venting unhappiness and also for beginning to say, I might be a kingmaker. Uh, you need to listen to me in my local area. Yeah. So let's let's talk about an area that really wants to be listened to, and that being the Northwest. Um, obviously calling on, well, the, the SACP calling on, on the ANC to remove the Premier there, uh, Supra Mahomopelo, and uh, asking him to step down. Uh, they're saying this is the top of the agenda, but obviously this is all speculation. We don't know as yet what's being discussed. But what do you make of this? I mean, I think, again, it's... Uh, the, 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 the new president has shown that he will listen. Um, but he's also shown, I think, that he'll do nothing rash or sudden, and certainly not because you make a demand on him. Uh, so I think people are quite correctly... It's a political space. They're trying to push their particular agenda. But I think if we learned anything about uh, Matamela Ramaphosa, it's that um, he'll move when he's ready, and very often he'll do nothing. Yeah. So yeah. he will allow uh, events to, to proceed appropriately, law enforcement agencies to act. Uh, you know, on the morning, if you remember, that we were told that president, former President Zuma wouldn't step down, uh, would never move, would do SONA. That morning, the police raided uh, for the first time the Gupta compound. And these, these kinds of events uh, where the president is, is, the current president is clearly sitting with his hands in the air saying, it's not me, um, they're nicely coincidental, but it does suggest that he's allowing the appropriate due process to take care of some of the issues that would normally be handled by the ANC. Yeah, yeah. So faith in our new president, I mean, are you, are you seeing good leadership on his behalf? We, we're obviously seeing things happening, perhaps not at the fastest pace that, that we as South Africans would like to see it. But then again, these things are, they do take time. And uh, it is a very, very intimate uh, web of corruption and state capture and there is so much to get to the bottom of do you think he's handling the situation well uh, personally yes i do i mean I, I think i think all of us as citizens and as residents uh, had a great or still have a great hunger for kind of vengeance uh, for these people who looted the state captured the state manufactured crises in in energy delivery and so on in order to steal yet more money out of our pockets and so we, we want revenge, uh, and we want you know, heads on pikes outside the uh, town halls and so on. And I think Ramaphosa is just saying, let's just do this properly. Yeah. Do it step by step. Do use due process. You know, I think if he'd come in and immediately sacked everyone, fired everyone, cut off heads, there would have been quite a few questions about what kind of leadership he was offering, because it would have been very reactive either to you and I as, as, as citizens or to the demands of his constituency. And I think he's very quietly saying, I'm in control. So just trust me, I will get there. I don't think he's entirely in control. There's always contestation. There are still people who are desperate for the old corrupt state to come back because their feeding lines have been cut. But I think he is showing that you can allow things to proceed at an appropriate pace. Yeah. And yeah. the right mechanisms will take care of, um, as it were, the wrong people.
Well, it's quite interesting you say that because, I mean, we just, when you talk about the fact that, you know, his hands are tied to a certain extent, and obviously there are factions that are against him and, f and the factions that are for him, but, I mean, we saw um, this discussion taking place uh, where it, it came, I suppose, that after this uh, protest in the Northwest, and we saw this Black Land First uh, coming out in support of the Premier and basically saying that w what happened was the mayhem was caused by uh, paid protesters uh, to come in there and cause chaos and they were sent by Ramaphosa. Uh, you know, this causing all untold havoc and the talks had to obviously be, be stopped um, and they are still calling for this radical economic transformation. Um, What's happening in the Northwest? Would, would this translate into a lot of other provinces? I mean, do you, you see the discord that's happening here in Gauteng, in the Western Cape as well, the Northwest, uh, differing parties calling for different issues, particularly land. Uh, let's talk about that issue. Look, I think there are a whole host of issues. I think, firstly, I think there is a natural tendency in the media, forgive me, uh, to go for small, very loud, very radical voices. Yeah. The BLF is a tiny group of miscreants uh, who can make a lot of noise um, and tend to be oddly in support of the former regime. Um, but frankly, there are a couple of hundred people, uh, whereas the ANC can, can mobilize uh, over 60% of the country. So I think have a bit of proportion. But your, your real point about protest on the ground, I think. You know, we are the most unequal society on earth. If you live as I do in Johannesburg, we're the most unequal city on earth. Uh, I think we have th three of the top 10 most unequal cities in, in the world in this country. So one should never be surprised to find that there are people who are very unhappy uh, with service delivery generally. But land has become uh, almost symbolic of a whole range of benefits that people are not accessing under democracy and after almost a quarter of a, a decade they're getting frustrated 23 years people really do feel that delivery should have speeded up and i th think the uh, you know ramaphosa termed land the original sin and i think in that way he's absolutely right i think if you don't tackle some of the the fundamental issues of which land is clearly one uh, and you keep saying, well, we'll give you a water connection for which you'll pay, and we'll give you electricity for which you'll pay. Yeah. People are caught in this very tight uh, economic circle where they're getting basic services, but they're not able to move beyond that. And I think the notion is that if I get some land, uh, A, I may be able to survive, but I can also sell it. It's an asset. I can get into the market. I can begin to expand. And I think that's why, in, as well as obviously the historical injustices and the pain associated with having land stolen by white settlers, I think all of that makes it a very emotive issue. Um, but I think it needs at some level to be seen in that broader context of frustration with a state that frankly hasn't delivered to enough people. Yeah, yeah, indeed. All right, Prof, we're going to have to leave it there, unfortunately. But Professor David Everett, the head of the uh, VETS School of Governance, talking to us about some leadership challenges and, of course, the NWC meeting in the Western Cape of the ANC and uh, those issues saying that uh, the uh, removal of the Northwest Premier is set to be topping the agenda, but we'll see what comes of that as well. Let's take a break.